Hello and welcome back to The Myth Within. I'm Dr. Tom and I'm very grateful to be back here from my long-awaited vacation where I went to the Cradle of Civilization exploring the roots of Greek and Roman myth as it relates to ways that we could see how the characters um, that were so prevalent during ancient times really can play out in our day-to-day -day psychological life and in modern times. My trip was a true blessing in that it was an awakening experience to see where these myths were told, to see the beauty of the architecture and the history present and alive within the world. Something I think we all need to honor as it relates to um, learning not only who we are collectively as a species but and honoring it, but also finding out the very meaning that the myths play within our personal life. Now, we ended the last series exploring um, the myth of Narcissus and Echo as it relates to modern-day egocentrism. And while it's a very psychological um, viewpoint of this myth, it's really important to understand that um, as it relates to modern-day psychology, the science that encapsulates mind, um, it wasn't always the case that this was an exploration of mind or symptoms present. What psyche was originally defined in ancient Greece was soul or breath. It, it had an interchangeable meaning as it relates to seeing ways that these myths could play out in our personal development. And in essence, the reason we tell stories or fairy tales to children is to create a means by which not only to warn them of the dangers of such things as egocentrism or the danger of the hunter that may be lurking in the field or not to trust necessarily a wolf or a fox that may come up to you, even though they both could have multiple meanings archetypally. The reason why we look at myths um, from a personal perspective is to really see um, storylines by which we could pass on information to prime the psyche for events to come. And seeing the beautiful statues and the pillars in such places as um, the Parthenon in Greece or the um, or within ancient Rome or walking the small cobbled stone streets of Mykonos, it, it really brought a eye-opening experience to determine how these myths play out in our modern day life. Where Where is Zeus amongst us? Where is the story of Ophelia? Where is the story of Romulus and Remus, the boys raised by wolves? Or in the last um, segment that we explored, the story of Echo and Narcissus, where, where does this play out in modern times? Well, I think we could see this play out in modern times in any court of law as it relates to um, family law. Um, we could also see the story of Narcissus and Echo play out within the halls of mental health. It, it also plays out in the story of love, passion, and warfare that we see happen in between men and women in regular relational um relationship capacities and so part part of this is looking at both the pathology that may be present but also to glean the lessons that are needed to take from the story in order that we may avoid pathological um the f the development of pathological um, problems within either the personality itself or within the relationship itself by which these two images of echo and narcissus mirror each other. So let's go to the original source um, for the story of echo and narcissus, which comes from the Metamorphoses by Ovid. It's a... Um, 
beautiful poem with multiple books that explores the pantheon of um, Greek gods and um, heroes of ancient times that really play out in storylines that we see in modern in our modern world. From book three of Metamorphosis, we're going to explore first um, the first part of the story, the transformation of Echo. Famed far and near for knowing things to come, from him the inquiring nations sought their doom. The fair Liriope his answers tried, the first the unerring prophet justified. This nymph the god Cephasus had abused, with all his winding waters circumfused, and on the Nereid got a lovely boy, whom the soft maids even then beheld with joy. The tender dame, solicitous to know whether her child should reach old age or no, consults the sage Tiresias, who replies, if ever he knows himself, he surely dies. Long live the dubious mother in suspense, till time unriddled all the prophet's sense. Narcissus now his sixteenth year began, just turned of boy, and on the verge of man. Many a friend the blooming youth caressed, many a lovesick maid her flame confessed. Such was his pride in vain, the friend caressed, the lovesick maid in vain, her flame confessed. What a beautiful yet tragic beginning to this story. I wonder if you would agree. What we have here is a person that is surely engulfed in her own flame as it relates to um, the boy that the muse Echo has fallen in love with. An act of abuse starts the story as it relates to the god Cephasus, who was a river god um, commonly associated with the river Cephasus in Attica, where, um, who was the father of Narcissus and his mother Liriope, who was a nymph who's inquiring, as all parents would, whether their child should live into old age. In doing this, she consults the sage Tiresias, who replies, if he ever he, if ever he knows himself, he surely dies. And we see here the beginning of a split where the, uh, where the abuse of a generation before really becomes the means by which the person living in the generation, in this case Narcissus, is really unable to find himself or surely die. The story moves on to Narcissus becoming a young adult in the 16th year and being on the verge of being a man. Um, he, he's popular. He has many of friends and he tends to be loved, especially by the women. Many a lovesick maid her flame confessed. There's a passion there that these women feel for him, but it's a passion that's really not... Um, reciprocated and this really shows the pride or the arrogance that is associated with narcissism because it really is an external locus of control there's there's a fashion of seeking out attention that occurs but this this attention is all external it, it does nothing to ignite a passion within that burns an internal flame to get to know oneself and this is um, shown in the next verse where it says such was his pride in vain the friend caressed his pride would not allow his friends to touch into the internal self where um, he ultimately would find beauty and when we begin to look at Echo as being a source of Narcissus's um, 
demise, basically what we're beginning to see is that narcissists cannot exist in a vacuum. If there's no mirror by which to reflect upon it, we, we begin to the narcissist begins to dematerialize. They, they have no sense of self outside of the external locus of control they seek attention from. The lovesick maid in vain her flame confessed. There's women hear a nurturing sense that is expressing their passion, their flame towards this character, but there's no capacity for him to overcome the pride. Now, the beginning of this story moves into a ominous premonition, and we're going to go back to the first passages here. Famed far and near for knowing things to come, from him the inquiring nations sought their doom. The fair Liriope his answers tried. The first, unearthing prophet justified, this nymph the god Cephasus had abused, with all his winding waters circumfused, and on the Nereid got a lovely boy, whom the soft maids even then beheld with joy. We're told of a boy, not a man. We're told that a boy's psyche can only come from this aspect of abuse where there's winding water circumfused. There's, there's not a natural path that's going here. And when we begin to see this type of childhood mentality, even though it's held on the highest pedestal, by the soft maids who behold with joy. The lovely boy does not represent a means by which um, we could stake values and morals as it relates to the puer archetype, this form of um, divine child that's born, because the divine child, it, it's completely egocentric. And when we begin to stake things around this idea of egocentrism, what happens is our family, our, the person, the family, all elements moving up from this are really built upon a shaky foundation where inquiring nations will find their doom as the as the story alludes. So what can we take from the first part of the story? One, When we sow seeds, we have to realize that what we get is about the work we put into it. When there's acts of abuse present, there's things to heal from, and this is really a place where narcissism begins. But narcissism can't exist in a vacuum. It, it has to have echo. It has to be echoed in order for it to persist. The echoing present in this case is really the external locus of control of how these um, maids, how these friends promote narcissists, even though there's no reciprocation provided. And this, this creates what we call the tyrant king. This creates a individual that... Um, has no foundation or basis, no internal structure by which to move from, but instead just blows with the wind. Second, we got to realize that there's a transformation present in this. And so narcissists or narcissists and echo, because there's this internal external factor moving on, it invites us to take a look at really what needs to be echoed in our lives to take us from a place of egocentrism or self-absorption to a place where 
we understand and develop a healthy love for ourself enough needed so that we could truly enjoy the benefits of loving others and being loved in return. It's here where the tragedy lies, because Narcissus in his 16th year, he's on the verge of being a man, and even though he is being caressed and loved by every individual, he doesn't love himself, and therefore he cannot reciprocate it or even benefit from the true beauty of passions that the gods offer us. Finally, as we look at the transformation present, it really begins to tie into mental health, especially as it relates to taking a look at these pathologies, not as a weaponized construct to throw at people, i.e., oh, this person's a narcissist, or this person has borderline, or this person has this. It it's when we do that that we really get stuck in the external locus of control and fling these, um, as the Buddha would say, holding on to the hot stone and with the intent of flinging it at another. Now, that's paraphrased from um, not only a popular quote, but it's not an exact quote from the Buddha, but there is um, elements in his teaching that talked about holding on to manure and throw with the intent of throwing it at people, who's the one that ends up getting burnt or who's the one that ends up stinking? Um, if we look at it from this perspective, there's there's a lesson to learn here. That these these terms aren't something to fling at people. They're they're normal aspects of personality. Now, is there narcissists in the world? Absolutely. Just as there are individuals that have depression or other forms of personality dysfunction. However, when we take a look at the pathologies present, if we hold it solely as a pathology, it does no service to us. Instead, we have to glean the lessons that are here within as a means to help individuals navigate these dy normal dynamics of personality so they don't become pathological in nature. And that's the true beauty of where these myths could bring us in understanding not only normal dynamics of personality, but also seeing the inner gold that these ashes are capable of creating within our personal life. I want to thank you for joining me here today, and I look forward to really picking these myths apart from the psychological perspective as a means to help individuals navigate just the torrent of information that seems to pathologize aspects of human behavior at the expense of not really showing what inner gold is present in these lessons of old. There's beautiful lessons to learn from history, to learn from... Our civilizations past to learn from the myths of old or the fairy tales we tell children. And as always, I hope that our exploration of these archetypal symbols common to myth and fairy tale can help you find a little sense out of the day-to-day -day life that we, um, that we all undertake in trying to make sense of bigger aspects of self as we move along. As always, friends, may blessings find you as you move along your journey to advance confidently in the direction of your dreams. We'll talk to you soon.